Huh? Bonnie! Yes? So I have the AMC A-list subscription service. It's a monthly thing where for $19.95 a month, I get up to three movie tickets a week for free. And I used to really take advantage of it from December 2018 to March 2020. I saw a whopping 177 movies in a 66 week period. Then the pandemic happened and it totally uh, messed up my groove. But yeah. now I'm back to watching movies. So it's time once again for our weekly up to date movie review section with Steve Stubbs of the Week. Dun, 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 dun. And this week's installment of Steve Stubbs represents my 13th week back in theaters. And in that time, I have now watched 24 movies. Uh, I think I only saw three movies in theaters during the pandemic. Yeah. A lot at the drive-ins. This weekend at the drive-in, they were showing... At the drive-in uh, in Oklahoma City, they were showing It Chapter One and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which I thought was a really weird double feature. Yeah. Yeah. But apparently they're going to be showing uh, more spookier movies and less family-friendly stuff for the month of October, so I'm really excited. Last year, my wife and I went out and saw the first Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th in a double feature, and it was fucking amazing, and I hope yeah. they do something like that again. Oh, also, also this weekend at the drive-in, while they were showing it, they had a guy dressed as Pennywise going through the car scaring people. Yeah. And I thought that was really fucking cool. You know? I think the... that's really fucking dangerous in Oklahoma. Oh, oh yeah. Hell yeah. I'm surprised no one got shot, but I still I think it's cool. But that's because I don't own any uh, firearms. Yes. So this week I saw the following two movies in theaters. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings for the second time. And the new musical... Dear Evan Hansen, which has m one of my favorite songs of all time, which I'd like to sing to you now. It's the title track. Dear Evan Hansen, what's it like in New York City? I'm a half a mile away, but girl, tonight you look so pretty. Yes, you do. I don't remember who sings that, but it's not from the Dear Evan Hansen musical. But I find that joke to be hilarious, and I think it's because it's a dad joke. Now let's first discuss the movie that will not be chosen as my movie pick of the week, and that is Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. This is my second time seeing it in theaters, and I'm starting to pick up little details. Like there's a fight on a bus, and it's a really good fight on the bus. But while everyone else in the theater is going, wow, this is an amazing fight on a bus, I'm in the theater going, this is the second movie I've seen this year where there's a fight on a public bus. Yes, true. How weird is that? Yeah. How, like, like I want to see a movie where Shang-Chi is fighting a Better Call Saul. Well, let me, let me propose a, th a theory, okay? Mm -hmm. Shoot, because you, you, you're talking about two movies pretty much shot during the pandemic. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So if you shoot on a bus, you can get the illusion of a big set piece. Yes. Because you can see the city streets and the buildings behind you, or... In nobody, you know, that would be more lights and things like that. But you can contain the number of, you can lower the number of people you actually need in the scene by putting them in a bus. So that's yeah. less people that you have to <clears throat> check to make sure they're vaccinated. You know, less people you could sp in both movies. Well, I haven't seen Chang 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 Chi, but even in Nobody. Everybody on that bus was fairly well social, socially distanced. Yeah. You know? Uh, I'm, so that's I'm just looking... a theory I'm proposing. Why you may see two films with action scenes on a bus in the same year. 
Uh, yeah, it's, okay. I'm sorry, so, uh, it's not a theory. It's a hy hypothesis. Okay, so I looked it up. Uh, they started filming Shang-Chi in February, and they got maybe like half of it done, but then they had to halt it on March 12th because of the damn pandemic, and they started filming again in like uh, August. But uh, I really liked the... I, I thought, oh man, the bus scene in Nobody is really good, but then the bus scene in Shang-Chi is really good, and the reason why it's really good is because um, the, the fight choreography was done by uh, the guy who used to do uh, the, the choreography for like uh, uh, Jackie Chan movies and shit. And then yeah. he died. And so the movie is like dedicated to him or some shit like that. But it's a really good, it's a really good uh, bus fight scene. But there's a guy in the bus and he starts filming it. He starts filming the fight. He starts live streaming it. And he's like, hey, y'all, what's up? It's your boy. Now, I took some kung fu as a child, so I'm going to rate this fight. And he's really funny because there's this big fight happening, but then there's just this one douchebag filming the entire fight. It took me a while to figure it out, but the second viewing, I figured it out. It's the same guy from the opening of Spider-Man Homecoming. He's working at a hot dog stand, and he's like, Hey, Spider-Man! Hey! Do a flip! And Spider-Man does a flip on top of a building, and, and, and the guy's like, Yeah! It's the same guy, and he's now appeared in two Marvel movies. Yeah. And so I'm really happy about that. Also, there's a scene where there's like an underground fighting sort of thing happening, and you, you pass this hallway, and in each room, there's a big window, and there are two different people fighting, and some of them have powers, and there's one fight that they focus on a little bit, and it's a guy who's glowing red, fighting this woman in an all-black outfit. And at first, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. But the second time I saw it, that's when I realized, wait a second, the guy who's glowing, he's an extremist person from Iron Man 3. <laughs> Except he didn't blow up. Because they, they would do experiments on people, and some of them would fucking blow up, and then some of them didn't, and he's one of the people who didn't. And then the woman that he's fighting in the all-black outfit I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure she's one of the Red Room people. Okay. From Black Widow. So I'm pretty sure it's a Black Widow trainee fighting an extremist person from Iron Man 3. So I'm starting to pick up the tiny little details, and I'm really excited about that. Anyway, it's a really fun movie, and I love it. Now, a question here. Yes. And I don't remember from Black Widow either, but... Anything in the way of a Stan Lee cameo? No. No, not at all. So we're just not doing cameos anymore? No. That sucks, man. I mean, uh, I could kind of go with Deadpool doing a cameo, but, like, it, at least do something. Like, okay, you're on a bus. Somebody on the bus? Big cut, cardboard cutout of Stan Lee. I'm I'm hoping that in a year or two we will get Deadpool doing the Stan Lee type cameos. Hopefully, yeah. that's what I'm hoping for. Fingers crossed. Or maybe somebody's reading the magazine and Stan Lee's face is on the cover. You know, I mean, Stan yeah, Lee something can like still that. do cameos if they want to get inventive. Yeah. Okay, and finally, the Steve Stubbs pick of the week is. Dear Evan Hansen, it's a movie based on a very popular Broadway musical. Ben Platt uh, plays a high schooler in the Broadway play, and he plays the same role in the movie. And a lot of people online are giving him shit because now he's 27 years old, and oh, he looks too old to be in this movie. 
oh man, yeah. he looks like he's 30 or 40 years old and he's pretending to be a high schooler. This is the silliest thing in the world. And we're all going to make fun of it because never in the history of movies has there ever been an older person playing a high schooler. Yeah. Did you ever see fucking Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man? Fucking Kristen Dunst is dating a 45-year-old high school fucking senior. <laughs> but whatever. So, um, I'm going to talk a little bit. Any I'm gonna talk fucking horror movie, all right? Yeah, yeah. Any yeah. of them. This happens all the fucking time. Friday so I don't know why everyone is... One through ten... <laughs> yeah, I don't know why everyone is focusing on this specific movie and this specific person, but, like, he does a good job, of course, because he did this forever on Broadway, and this is his part and his <coughs> baby, and he does a really good job, and the movie's all right. But that's not what I want See, to talk but, about. But I, I totally get your point, because, like, I've heard of this. I've heard of this guy being in this, in this Hanson movie, and he's too old for the part, and there's absolutely no fucking reason for me to have heard about it. It's so many people are just like punching down right now about Dear Evan Hansen. And it's like, okay, we can make fun of Cats because Cats is a shitty movie. Dear Evan Hansen is all right. They've cut out a lot from the musical, a lot of musical numbers. And, uh... I find that the character of Evan Hansen and the things that he does in this musical are really shitty and he's an asshole. And I think that if you're seeing the play and you're there in person and you're watching it and you're then you're excited to see a musical and to see it in person. And especially on Broadway, there's an excitement. And so when you see the play, it's a spectacle and you love it. But when you're watching a movie, there's less of a spectacle and you're focusing more on characters and motivation. And that's when you realize when you're watching the movie as opposed to seeing the play, when you're watching the movie, you have time enough to say, wow, this character is a piece of shit. And all of the things that he does are fucking horrible. It's like watching Tobey Maguire's first Spider-Man movie now and you go, okay, this fucking asshole is stalking Mary Jane. Yeah. So, yeah, Evan Hansen's a fucking creep, but he does a good job in the movie, and I just don't understand why everyone's picking on this one guy. He, he, he doesn't look that bad in the movie, but I can look past that because yeah, all of my pictures. life, all of my life, I have been seeing, like, 25 to 30-year-old people on fucking 90210 and shit, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and let's I don't face know. another fucking fact, okay? Yeah, most actors who would actually be age appropriate to the to the role are messed out of their fucking heads. Absolutely, absolutely. So I so so yeah. I, I don't mean, know why people literally. Are... Who acts in that age bracket? I don't know. What breakaway stars know. have there been in that age bracket? It's no a idea. fucked up time in life to be a human, and you're really not fit for the movie industry at that moment. Yeah. We'll get back to you. That's why a lot of the kid stars go off to college during those years. Yeah, they get hopped up on goofballs. Yeah. Two. But I, it, that's all I want to talk about, Dear Evan Hansen. I want to talk about my experience going to see Dear Evan Hansen because I, because I had one of the worst movie-going experiences of my life. Okay. So I normally don't go, a, go see a movie on opening night. Right. Because there's still a freaking pandemic happening, and I don't want to be in a theater with a bunch of people, so I go and see movies on Mondays and Thursdays. On Mondays, there's fucking no one in the theater, and I can just go, and most of the time I'll be by myself, and it'll be a blast, and if there's anyone else, there's only going to be two or four other people, and we're all socially distanced, and it's fine. And then I go to the movies on Thursday, but I hardly ever see the opening, the opening night movie, Instead, what I do is I go and see a movie. Uh, 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 I'll go and see a. I'll go and see a movie that's been out for a while. Where are you guys going? Apparently, I have to go get them. 
never why? Had a deer and won't drive in the house. Why are you guys driving to go get emerald? Oh, okay. Dude, ask, ask another person. I would appreciate if you asked someone else. Thank you. Uh, so, so I usually don't go to the opening night for movies, which is Thursday. But I decided I really wanted to see the new Evan Hansen movie. So I went on opening night. Um, I got there five minutes before the previews started. And I had heard some bad reviews. I want one of the reasons why I wanted wanted to see it on opening night is because it was getting impossible to ignore reviews. Okay. Trying to ignore reviews of Dear Evan Hansen before the movie came out came out felt like Neo on the roof dodging the bullets. <laughs> okay. That they were just all coming at me and I was just like, whoa, trying to dodge all of these bad reviews. So it's like I got to get this over with now. But by the time I got to the movies, it's like, oh, well, I have been hearing some bad things. So I decided to sit in my this movie may be bad seat, which is back row middle. And I sit there because off my mom, when I was a kid, my mom would take me to just every movie, regardless if it was a movie that was appropriate for kids. If my mom wanted to see a movie, she would take me. And so I ended up seeing horror movies, adult movies, movies with sex, movies with violence, Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, like, like, a, like a Commando and like Stallone's Cobra and fucking yeah. Predator and shit. So if when I was a kid, if there was ever a movie that I was super bored at, what I would do is I would just look up and see the projection in the sky. And I always liked that as a kid. And I was like, oh, look at that. So there's the projector back there. And look at it through the sky. You can see it through the dark room before it hits the screen. And so now, if I'm going to see a movie where it's like, okay, I'm gonna go see Matthew McConaughey and Serenity, I'm sitting in the back row. Yes. So that if it's bored, I can just look up and see the projection. And also, if it's a really bad film and I start like gesturing, like like uh, I'm watching a bad movie and I'm, I, I'm moving my hands, like, what, what, what the fuck is this? Oh my God, face yeah. palm. So I sit in the back. Right before the opening credits start for Dear Evan Hansen, eight high schoolers come in. Okay. Four boys and four girls, and they head straight to the back row. Then they see me, and for whatever reason, they decide to split up. Four of them sit on one side of me, a few seats to the left, and four more sit a few seats away from me on the right. So I'm surrounded by high schoolers on both sides. Okay. And they're seniors in high school. I know that they are seniors in high school because during the opening song, there's a pep rally and two of these fucking douchebag boys start going, seniors! And the other ones on the other side start going, whoop, whoop, seniors! And so they're ye already yelling. It's the opening number. And yeah. already they're yelling during the fucking movie. Okay? So I already know this is going to be some bullshit. Between both groups, on my left and on my right, they must have taken about 30 different photographs during the movie. In the dark, with the flash on. And some of them might have been me. I'm trying not to look at the douchebag teenagers who are yelling and screaming and taking photographs on their phone. I'm trying to focus on the movie and not on them, but there are so many bright flashes that I'm starting, I'm pretty sure they took some pictures of me, the blue haired Mexican sitting alone with a face mask, the only person with a face mask in the fucking screen and a big ass tub of popcorn. So, uh, there were high schoolers on both sides, but the people on the left were the worst. There was one in crutches. I'm assuming high school football team. I don't know. Maybe wrestling team. Maybe a track guy got injured. I don't fucking know. He started making jokes. I, bl I don't blame him as much. In the opening number, 
Evan Hansen starts eating a can of nuts. So they must have done at least 20 D's nuts jokes during the film. And they're yelling them. They are yelling them. Yeah. D's nuts. <coughs> and they say, and they would especially yell D's nuts during emotion, emotional moments. Like, oh my God, my son is dead. Oh my God, he signed your cast. Sign these nuts, and then during sad moments, during sad okay, songs. Okay, okay, okay. Wait a second. But it was fun as shit when we did it. That's what I was trying to think. I was trying to think. I I don't want to complain to these people because I was young. I was young once too. Back in my prime, we would also sit in the back and make fun of movies. And all of that shit. It, it, but it was difficult to focus on the movie if there was a sad song that someone was singing. If there was a really sad song, they would start going, Yeah! Woo! And that distracts you from the movie-going experience. Yeah. But then, um, about halfway through the movie, right before the memorial scene, so there's a memorial for the kid who committed suicide. And uh, Evan Hansen is about to go on stage to talk about this kid who had just committed suicide. Right before that happens, and that's the big musical number. That's the big showstopper. You will be found. And it's the song that, that to so many young people who fell in love with dear Evan Hansen, this song gives them hope. Uh, right before that song hap happens, I hear the one in crutches to the le left of me arguing with his girlfriend, saying shit like, well, fuck you. You're the one who brought me to this fucking movie. Fucking, this is fucking bullshit taking me to this. You're the one who fucking dragged me here. So he yells really loudly. And there's like 35 people in this theater. But he yeah. yells really loudly. And I apologize for the language, but... I, it, this is me quoting him saying this. He yells really loudly in the theater, I'm not a fucking queer! He would do this twice during the movie. Not three times, because the third time, he said, I ain't no fucking fag. Uh, okay. Before the gay stuff, before he started yelling the gay stuff, I... I seriously considered standing up and going and complaining to the manager. But uh, when I was in high school, I went to go see the movie The Paul Bearer in theaters with fucking yeah. David Schwimmer. And uh, there were these four high school, uh, young, very young high school girls who were at the theater, and they were only there because David Schwimmer was on Friends. And... They were being really loud and yelling and throwing stuff in the theater. So I went and complained to the manager. And then the manager went and talked to them because apparently one of the girls was the little sister of the manager. And the manager came not to stop them, but to point out that I was the one who complained. So the girls moved seats so that they were right behind me and started shaking the seat with their foot and throwing shit directly at me. It was the one and only time that I have ever walked out of a movie ever and it was because there was five pounds of fucking popcorn thrown at me. Okay. So I'm already gun shy about going to the manager at a theater about fucking anything but I'm seriously considering going to the and, and, manager. And there is a gang of them. Yeah, there's eight of them. There are eight of them. Yeah. And so I was seriously considering... And they're all hopped up on goofballs, like at, you had yeah, said. As, as all young people are. Yeah. Yeah. But once... So they got that the super real, strength. Yeah. But once the really angrily homophobic stuff started getting yelled at, that's when I realized I am a Mexican with blue hair. Painted nails, a purse around my shoulder, and I know they don't know that I 
that that there is no way that these high schoolers would know I've got a thong on, but somehow they'll know <laughs> that I have a fucking thong on. So suddenly I'm scared to go and tell them, tell the manager, because I will have to pass one of the gaggle of teens who are yelling violent homophobic shit. Yeah. And I swear one of the times they yelled that they were looking at me because it was louder. And I think because they were focused out of me. So it got to the point where even during the movie, when I needed to pee, I dared not leave my seat out of fear. And then I started getting pissed off because uh, what got me was this guy is literally yelling offensive homophobic slurs during the movie. But what about the other 35 fucking people in the theater who never once get up to complain? Yeah. You know? Like, I'm not leaving for a good reason because I am a, a, a member of the LGBTQIA plus family and I don't want to go past these people that are saying the worst homophobic slurs known to man with my fucking purse that says Bart Harley Jarvis on it. But fucking, why is no one else complaining? Because I live in a small town in a deeply red state. But, he, but uh, um, near the end of the film, when a uh, certain person finally came clean in the movie, the girls left. I don't know if the girls had enough of the boys' shit, but I'd like to think that they did. Yeah. And they ditched the boys. So the two on the left crossed me to get to the two on the right so that they could all sit as a group. And one of them uh, uh, brushed past my leg and said, fucking watch it to me. And when Julianne Moore finally had her song at the end, one of them yelled, shut the fuck up, cunt. And they walked out shortly afterwards, and one of them said, fuck this fucking faggot movie. And as they passed and said that, one of them looked directly at me, and I legitimately thought that there is a chance that when I finally get out of this movie, that it is in the realm of possibilities that these fucktards might be waiting for me in the parking lot. Yeah. But they were not. But here's the thing. I loved Evan Hansen. I loved the movie Dear Evan Hansen. But I have no idea if it's because it was good or because the asshole teenagers fucking hated it. You know? Mm, yeah. I don't know if I would have liked the movie if there weren't asshole teenagers surrounding me yelling homophobic slurs. Because they're like, fuck this fucking faggot movie, fucking faggots, I ain't no queer. And I'm like, well, fuck you. Now I love this movie, you fuck asses. Yeah. But, but I, I, so I think I, I loved Dear Evan Hansen, but I think I loved it out of spite. Yes. I don't think I liked it because it was any good. I, I mean, I mean, uh, Ben Platt does a pretty good job. Uh, he does a great job. He, he, and there are parts of the movie that I absolutely love, like when they're writing, when they're writing uh, the, the letters that the dead kid allegedly wrote. That whole musical number is absolutely wonderful, and I love it. And I might put that song on my phone. But, yeah, I think I liked it out of spite. And then I came home, and I, I told uh, my wife about it, and then just got really fucking high. And that made me feel better. But, hey, this is a lesson learned. Don't go to a movie on opening night. Yes. This is what I have learned. And yes. I will take what I have learned and bring it into the world. And so, uh, so yeah, so that's it for uh, Steve Stubbs this week. I'm not sure what I'm watching next week, but it's not going to be any repeats. I'm going to try and watch some new movies, some new up-to-date movie reviews. So join me next week for more Steve Stubbs of the Week. And cut on that.